Man, you really gonna shoot these bits for buttons extend pressure is really good. She wants this dark woman and regular character life. Wait a minute! Hey there everybody! Set there with the Death Empress Izanami mod showcase and release video. So much for that March release day, but what matters is we're here now. She seems to be ready. I slaved over fixing her overdrive yes, stake of supremacy follow-up for about five hours total. And everything's gonna be good now. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Gotta go ahead and hope the audio is good and just spare everyone else any other uh just yammering. Let's get on right into this. Although I will say with how long the showcase video, I think I'm gonna try something this showcase video. I think I'm, awesome. I'm gonna try and streamline it a little in a way that um, I would like some feedback on. We'll get to that a little later on how we're gonna do that, but we'll continue as normal right now. Just throwing that out there. Do let me know how that works out. All right, so Death Emperor Izanami is easily probably the biggest yes, crime against humanity that I have shown. I'm not shown on the channel, but definitely released at this point. This character is frankly obscene and very much pushes the boundaries of uh, what I think would probably be considered acceptable for a Blaze Blue mod. Because uh, she's just absurd. But that, that, that just makes her all the more exciting, I guess, for everyone. At least until everyone asks me to inevitably nerf her. Okay, um, intro monologue out of the way. Let's get right into what's different now. So, a minor note is that I have built this mod off of her unlimited form, which means basically everything that applies to her unlimited form also applies here by default. I'll probably still repeat some changes that are applied to the unlimited form anyways, but just, just throw them out there in case I do miss anything. All right, now, Izanami here has a grand total of 20,000 HP because she is a, uh, story central character and I do give them a little extra HP but normally super bosses get 8,000 extra but um for important characters like uh, Izanami or Jin or you know Hazama they get uh they get the 20,000 health boost. She also has a nice little 50% damage bonus on top of that. Unlimited Izanami gets a 10% damage bonus for uh perspective there. Death Empress gets 50, which means she's going to be doing a lot more. Her combo rate is also buffed to 90. As for usual, I'm not going to try and explain what combo rate does. Uh, you, you, you Google that one. <laughs> it's it's I, I don't fully understand or comprehend it myself. Uh, she's also got a new thing, new idle animation, as you've seen. I get it, added those uh, two little fireballs that hover on the side of her and follow her. They're really uh, cool looking and nice. Spiffy new idle animation, some black aura from the good old abyss mode, and a uh, after image to go with it. She's very she's very visually beautiful. Her overdrive timer is the usual super boss timer of 13 seconds at full HP, and I need to the overdrive real quick. And 22 seconds at the lowest HP threshold, which is like about 10%, I believe. So overdrive lasts a while. Her old overdrive effects are active by default. Which means she has full access to the abilities of both of her stances, or 5D doesn't actually uh, exist anymore. If you press 5D or 2D, they've both been deleted, but 5D will just have her do her 4D bit attacks now. And that means she can also still block. You see, she's gonna block like normal now, too, even though she can fire her bits. Her walking and her air dash speed have both been increased by 50%, and her ground run speed has been multiplied by 2.5. So she... Her, her ground run mobility was actually really low, so that's why it has a much bigger multiplier on her air dashes are a lot better now. She has, Her back dash is also faster, travels farther, and has more invincibility. Big difference there. She has three air dashes, and her air dash duration has been reduced significantly, so she can act out of them faster. Which can result in cool combos like... Let me see if I can think of it off the top of my head here. Um, right, it was... Stuff like that is now possible. You can pick up off that. There's other variations too, but I can't think about enough off the top of my head there. She has rapid passive meter gain. God, I did not prep training mode for this at all. I kind of just got into it. I just kind of just went into it. 
So her heat regenerates Easy. passively at a pretty noticeably fast rate in order to have a 25 just from that small little monologue there. Her maximum float duration has been doubled, so she can actually hover up in the air a lot longer. Um, the higher she is up in the air, or I think, yeah, the higher she is up in the air, the lowest the, the float time is. That's just a default mechanic for her. So if you go really high up in the air, you'll notice her float runs out a lot faster than it would if you just did it, like, really close to the ground here. But, yeah, she can stay up there for a while. A long while. <laughs> And all of her ground normals done during float are now considered overheads instead of mids, so you have to block them high, and they don't get the head property added to them, which removes their weakness to anti-airs! Alright, let's talk about one of the little eye candy factors down there. You probably noticed a little purple gauge down there, and that, my friend, is there for her Shield of Dreams. Just like her unlimited form, as you noticed probably by now, uh, hopefully anyways, the Shield of Dreams is permanently active passively on Izanami, and it'll take, um, three hits! Her limited form takes two! Death Emperor takes three to knock down the shield, and you saw that the gauge goes down when the shield takes a hit, and that's because her shield is now no longer tied to her barrier gauge! So essentially, the shield is tied to its own gauge now, so she doesn't have to suffer danger state, which means when it's knocked down, she doesn't eat extra damage. It comes back faster after it does get knocked down, and it takes an extra hit to knock down. If that sounds absurd, that's because it is, and quite frankly, I'm... Really wondering if that was actually necessary, considering the two hits on her limited form were already pretty ridiculous already on their own, but, uh... Yeah, I felt the need to give her three anyways. Alright, so next we're gonna talk about some bulk changes I've done to certain groups of moves here. So, Izanami being the literal embodiment of death gave me some interesting design decisions to, to, to do with her. So, for starters, her forward throw, her Arms of Sympathy special, uh, J63214B, Bulwark, 63B, Crush Trigger, and her 22C, um, Unlimited Dive, will now all freeze on hit. And Izanami is allowed three freezes per combo, with the exception of 22C, which will only freeze if it is the first move to hit in a combo that freezes. So, for example, if we do 2-2-C, that'll freeze, and we do, like, 6-B, Bulwark, freeze again. Do Arms of Sympathy first, and then 2-2-C. You'll notice that the diving grab and bite did not freeze afterwards. So, that that's how that works. But, four throw, her air special, barrier disable, crush trigger, these all freeze on hit with a limited free throw combo. Overall. On the other end of the spectrum, Stake of Supremacy, which is 2626B, Ghost Peak Strike, which is 2626A, 5A, 2A, 5C, 2C, 6B, 3C, JA, JC, and Distant Affection, her ground command grab, all inflict poison that is stronger and longer than normal poison by 50% each. So, about half of her, about, like, a third of her moves freeze, and just about the rest of them all inflict poison on hand. Sounds fun, right? The idea behind this is that, that, um, her being near you and coming into contact with you is, um, the cold, decaying touch of death. So, it'll freeze you and poison you, which decays away at your health bar. It's, I, I know, it's kind of, it's cool and stupid at the same time. It's also really fucking broken. <laughs> it really enhances her damage output more than it already is. Um, the poison has a limit if that time stop is active now. The moves that inflict poison will not inflict new poison for the duration. So say if I do... Uh, shit. Say if I do... If I do time stop and she's poisoned, the poison will remain. But if I try to apply new poison, doesn't work. And that's because having poison active during time stop and able to be reapplied made it for ridiculously easy TOE. Like, it wasn't even funny. Yeah! Freezing and poison! Along with a faster shield with more hits to destroy. God, how can it get any worse? People need to start talking about her, though. It definitely gets even more crazy from here. And this actually segues into those uh, bulk changes I was talking about. So, these videos oftentimes end up pretty long just from, like, talking about the basic changes I do to characters and normals, like, oh, they can cancel this one and do this one now, or it can jump cancel this, or... I'm gonna streamline that bit here. 
So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna so I'm gonna go ahead and just pop on-screen text here while I rant for a little while about uh, my reasoning behind this. So all the new all the normals that I don't really do much to and just make give it cancel options all that. That's just gonna be on screen right now rather than just showing it off in detail. It seems a little. I don't know, excessive to show me jump canceling to specific stuff. So we're gonna see how that uh, helps the video time, and you can pause and read at your own pace, obviously too. So that helps as well. Well, like I said, let me know if that's if you think that's good or not, and I'll keep doing it from here on forth. But uh, otherwise, I'll go back to the old style of things if that's what you prefer. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, that'll hopefully save us some time and make this less long here. So, what do I jump to now? Oh, right, there is some normals that I actually do want to shop because I feel they're probably rather impactful being her, her D normals. But, um, J2C! This got gigabuffed, and I think her 6C did too, but I, I put that on the list of things to just show on the, the on screen text there. So, J2C, I designed this to be in all but the size of the hitbox. A more obnoxious version of Byakuya's Charge J2C from Undernight. Which means this launches into a lengthy, untackable knockdown. Lengthy is right. You can do basically anything you want after this game. It's kind of absurd. Carries up into a lengthy, untackable knockdown. You can loop the fuck out of it, apparently, too, a little bit. And it's also safe on block. And this also hits high now, so you have to block it standing. This isn't a mid anymore. Next up are her buffed D normals. So her D normals recover as fast as her unlimited form it as her unlimited forms do in overdrive. So unlimited Izanami gets faster bit recovery in overdrive. That is Death Empress Izanami's default value. They come back nigh instantly, as you can see, after firing. And as well, all the non 6D shots will do a second pass for Izanami after firing at the opponent, making them deal a second hit. And all D-normals now also have increased air and tackable time as well. 6D specifically is tackable 4 from 2 with 95 operation 2 from 92. Can scale better. It's as fast as the unlimited overdrive version by default and auto corrects its direction if the opponent dodges it, just like the unlimited version. So say if they uh, like jump over Izanami or something. It'll turn and shoot behind her to catch them. 4D is level 3 from 1, and this goes full screen now, just barely, and that last little one in the front will click somebody. 1D, 2D, and 3D are now also attack level 3 from 1. Getting them more hits done, blocks done, and the like. And that already catapults us onward into her specials, which is part of the reason I wanted to streamline her normals, because dear god does Izanami have a lot of specials to talk about. We'll kick things off with 2-6A, Ghost Peak Strike. It's overall slower, like the limited version, but it sends out two heads one after the other. And each head can deal up to three hits if properly spaced, like so. And it does 4k raw and poisons, because that's fair. The heads are also larger and have 100 more base damage. Making them really bring on the hurt. They stagger on grounded hit like they normally do on counter hit. The air and tackable time is raised by 50%, and holding A, just like the unlimited version, will have Izanami teleport forward midway through. Although, unlike the unlimited version, it is invincible after she disappears until she reappears. If you try to challenge her at that point through, like, guard, uh, guard canceling, is probably gonna whip, and then she'll be able to beat the shit out of you. Alright, next up is Thunderbolt Lance. This is her 214X series, so 214A and 214B. These moves can now be held to have Izanami pass through and attack the opponent from behind, just like her limited form. The difference, with it, once again, between the limited form and this is that she is now invincible from when she disappears until she reappears. Once again, making actually challenge them significantly harder or being able to more easily punish you with them. As for how each... As for how each one is individually changed, 214A will now Guard Crush, block, and will Wall Bounce and will Wall Stick with very high chip damage. And is counted as an overhead if used during float. It can also be Jump Cancelled on block or hit while floating to end the float prematurely. Like so. Inspiration has Inspiration 1 has been raised to 90 and has a bit of extra knockdown time. And it can now also cancel into either 214C, which is a new move, or 63214. 214B, its low hitting counterpart, is slightly faster and can cancel into 214A. 214C. 
4621 4C. Okay, well, it can cancel in it, but it can't combo off it, apparently. That's probably more for, uh... Block strings. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's definitely more for block strings. The Operation 1 has been raised to 90, and the air injectable time has increased by 50%, as well as the knockdown time. And the verbal knockback has also been increased to help it connect better again with, uh... Or more A here, in most instances. The extra knockdown time lets you do, uh, pickups with the starter, like so. Pretty easily. And last but not least is the aforementioned 214C, which is a new special that acts like the others and uses the 6C animation, of the, or the second hit of it at least. This is a overhead variant. She had a low and she had a mid, so I figure she's gonna have an overhead variation as well. Works similar to the others, although this is the, uh, considering it's more like a Rekka chain, you consider it the end of the Rekka chain, or I guess you consider distant affection the end of the Rekka chain, because 214C can cancel into 63214C. Or a command grab and enter, or it can also cancel into Stake of Supremacy for some reason. If I had the meter for it. I don't know why I kept that on there. It's a little redundant now that I know a little bit more about, like, stuff she can do. But it's there, I guess. Might as well keep it. Next special list is Bulwark, or 63B. And obviously it can be used without, uh, the shield active. I think even, yeah, when it's broken, she can use it too, right? Yeah, she can use it even when the shield isn't active. And this will give back half of Izanami's barrier and shield gauge on hit. And the inspiration one penalty removed, so if her shield's broken and she hits you, she gets half her barrier, her shield back. Just stop that. The hit stop is also slightly increased, and it pops the opponent up a bit higher, making it, uh, kind of a premier combo extender. And Shield of Dreams also reactivates the moves complete if she has the gauge for it. It goes away and then comes back, obviously. Arms of Sympathy, her air special, uh, J63214B, goes into normal fall state during recovery. It's also, uh, an overhead now. It doesn't bounce Izanami back on hit anymore, but it will still do it on block to help keep her safe. Like so. Ah, there we go. That's when the uh, recovery change comes to, comes to play there. If they, try, if they do try to punish you, you can actually do a normal retaliation now. Okay, glad to get that cleared up. This is the best about Um, like unlimited Izanami, you can hold B during the attack to have Izanami teleport to the ground. Instead of actually doing the move as he sort of faint option. The faint variation has even less recovery than her limited form, and the operation one of this move has been buffed from 80 to 90, making it a better combo starter. That, like, accidental air dash instant float 6B was kind of nasty. Flaming Doe! Meteor! 4 one 2 3 6 c This move, um, is fucking absurd. I actually had to, uh, nerf it a bit before release here. So, Flaming Note is always at full charge, attack level 5. The Meteor is completely air unblockable, projectile level 4, letting it blow through basically everything. Does it, does it just beat Rachel Tempestalia? FACE MY DIVINE wrath! Oh my oh god, that's so disgusting. And then the Meteor is even bigger than the regular full charge version. The explosion is also larger, as well. Deals increased chip damage on the meteor itself and the explosion. Pushback on the explosion when blocked is reduced. And the first hit damage while it's above her head is no longer reduced during time slot. This attack was doing way too much damage and still kind of does. So it's the only attack exempt from her global damage bonus that she has. So it, it does not benefit from the 50% damage bonus. Although it still, it still does more damage total by itself than her limited version does. Trust me. This is, uh, yeah, there's some disgusting shit you could do with this prior to the, uh, the, the changes to the damage that I did. It's still probably capable of some real, like, war crimes, but there's, I can't do much else about it. <laughs> Without, like, being, nerfing it too hard, by my standards. Scooting onto her next special, Distant Affection, her ground and command grab, 63214C, is now also an abomination of a move. It now sports an invincible teleport dash for the grab, like her limited version. Doubled base damage, which stacks with the global damage bonus she has for a grand total of uh, dealing 2700 with poison. And the animation is faster, just as kind of a visual flair, because it helps you help them down the ground, helps you uh, fighting them. 
It now also supports a bigger throw range and can be used in combos, even on airborne targets, so... That's possible now. And more. On hit, it will eat half the victim's barrier gauge, restores one hit of Izanami's shield gauge, and also steals 3,000 health and 30 heat from the opponent. Oh, you can also hold it to have Izanami pass through, like, a uh, of and grab them from behind. Similar to her Thunderbolt Lances, like her Unlimited, it has the float cancel jump option that it, uh... So, after a successful grab in the air... It's a little public weird for me to show this off. Shit, um, I think I know how. Yeah, you can jump cancel after the, uh, or rather, float cancel the, uh, fighting hit to drop down afterwards. I'm not sure what practically use that has in combos, but I imagine there's something we can do with it. And lastly, the Parishion 2 has been increased to 60, so it doesn't scale combos as heavily as afterwards, although it's still pretty harsh. On to the infamous duo of Bit Special, starting with the more notorious of the two, probably Droplet, her 4 and 2 60. This now fires three times! Instead of two, like her limited for maximum troll, and is slightly faster than normal to actually begin tra to track the opponent and begin firing. I didn't even need to do anything more than that. Orchid, 63214D, is larger now, he is attack level 3, and has massively increased chip damage, 50% from previous 30, with more attack level time and 50% higher base damage, which, once again, is amplified further by her global damage bonus. Operation 1 and 2 have been raised to 90, and now has 120 bonus duration, dealing 10 hits max, and it stays out longer. You can also move it around if you hold, if you, like, hold D while it's out, you can like, move it around like that, which is kind of cool, although a little hard to do while doing other things. Both Orchid and Droplet will return to Izanami quicker after finishing their attack, and act autonomously from her when sent out, because normally I'd reveal she has to, uh... Do a little animation to send them out. Well, uh, she doesn't. They just go. We can use them while she's doing other moves. I'm pretty sure that's an unlimited change. Or I'm not sure. That, maybe that happens during her active mode. I don't. I don't actually know the like nitty gritty specifics of this character too well. I know a lot, but not like minor details like that. Okay, where were we? Uh, oh yeah! Now we can now we can talk about her limited specials that I also obscenely buffed beyond reason and logic. We'll go ahead and start with her 22AB unlimited teleports that you can hold to delay them. And delaying the startup will have the startup be longer, but the recovery will be even more reduced than it already is. She is vulnerable while she's holding the startup, but that's the trade-off for the instant recovery to help her. In general sp generally speaking though, these are now much quicker! With frame one invincibility. And less recovery. You can cancel in any ground normal on hit or block. Oh, you can cancel them in each other too. Or really nasty teleport chains. And both can use twice per cancel chain. So stuff like that's possible. I'm not sure what kind of, like, cool combo things- Oh, here we go. Okay, okay, maybe there's some potential. I was wondering for a while what kind of, like, combos you can do with this. Alright, my favorite's up next. 2-2-C! A third unlimited teleport that is a diving grab that can also be held to delay it. Take out your opponent. Has virtually no landing recovery on whiff anymore, so normally you can duck- You can still duck this. You can always duck this on her unlimited form. You can still duck it now, but... Now your recovery is pretty non-existent, allowing you to just continue pressure anyways in those cases. It will now also attract the opponent with its Proration 2 buffed to 80, making it scale much better in combos. Steals half the barrier, heat, and health that Distant Affection does, so the traditional command grab will steal more resources than the cracking diving grab here, but still recovers one hit of Izanami's shield gauge. And, like as I mentioned, you can still dodge by crouching. The air and technical time has also been greatly increased as well. It also freezes, as we already went over earlier. So, if it's the first freeze in your combo, you can use your extend off of that. The last of our unlimited special series is 2-2-D, which is an unlimited parry that beats everything except for throws. If she gets attacked, she will teleport behind the opponent and taunt. 
option there. Recording. Like so. And if you hold the button while she eats it, well, she eats a hit, they'll have Izanami shock the opponent with drop blood a single time during her taunt retaliation. Otherwise, she'll teleport behind the opponent. You can just punch them. Okay? If Izanami is hit by a projectile instead, and you hold D, she will instead have Orchid appear in front of her instead. To be used as normal, you can still move it around with a uh, while holding D. Just like Orkin Droplet, the cooldown of her Magatama on both of these follow-ups is halved, so it returns to her faster. This will disable any projectiles from the Magatama if it's used, just because uh every time I tried a parry thing with this, it would shoot the bits out, and I found it really annoying and disrupted to the attack itself. So yeah, this will cancel any bits that are out while you uh are trying to parry things. The Droplet Shot follow-up is now a Fatal Counter with 120 Paration 1, though, making this a very rewarding carry to land. <laughs> oh, wow, that would have led to very big damage, you can probably tell already. <laughs> The counter is now active much earlier than the landed version. It's not a frame one parry still, but it is a lot faster than it was before, making it much easier to land. Oh, with all the special changes out of the way, we can get onto the good stuff, the supers! Boy, did I do a lot with these two. We'll start with 214214C, the super grab, Hour of Nihility. This has 50% more throw range and is now frame one invincible. The invincibility being from her limited version, the throw range is a change that I did myself. The start time before the super flash is a half, making it much more unreactable, and the time stop will now last five seconds, which is longer than it usually will. The duration one is raised to 110, making it a positive combo starter, and the base damage has been doubled from 250 to 500. We have a lot more time during the time stop from the grab to uh, beat shit up your opponent. Stake of Supremacy! 266B! Just like the Enlanded version, it is faster and will teleport behind the opponent for attacking. And it now has an added 25% minimum damage across the board, except for the final claw attack, which is 30% uh, instead. Its Operation 2 is now also buffed from 72 to 85, meaning a raw super will now do. 72, 78. Do not get punished by this. Moment of Benevolence, or more commonly and belovingly known as Zawaldo! The command has been changed to a 360A command instead of a 720A, making it a lot easier to just uh, use when you want to. It also has much faster startup! And the time stop from this lasts 10 seconds, and the move now only costs 50 meter. Instead of 100. Allowing you to spam this significantly more, and overall if you use it to your heart's content. Oh, damn. I can't that Scaling on was ridiculous. As a final cherry on top for both time stop moves, which is uh, both the 720A and the 214-24C, the final hit of both time stops now deals a fixed 1,000 damage instead of 100, and Izanami will recover faster, giving her more advantage afterwards. And on top of her three normal distortions, she also has two new distortions that I've given her. The first being 2362-6A. Izanami will slump forward for dashing for towards the opponent into a barrage of claw swipes before tossing him into the air and finishing with a final slam. This is definitely not a reference to Sho Minazuki's Blazing Sun Barrage from Persona 4 Arena Alpha Max. Uh, you can't move you can't use this move during float, but there was some weird bugginess with the uh, final ground at the end of the slam. As you can see, the final slam ground bounces the opponent very high into the air for a very easy call ups. The most common one probably being. Uh, oh, works too, I guess. I was gonna say, with well, 100 meter, you can very easily just do this into State of Supremacy for an easy double super combo. I think it feels about like 9 or 10k. It feels like hella. Uh, almost 9k. Still a good combo interruption, especially in overdrive. 
Her other new distortion is to succeed. Yes, Izanami will charge up before releasing a massive Arms of Sympathy ghost wave across the screen. Unlike other distortion drives, this will not end time stop on hit, which means you can actually indeed do time stop grab into this super to attack on damage and still keep your time stop active. I'm not sure how practical that is or optimal, but hey, it's something. And this is definitely not a copy of Minazuki's Wings of Purgatory Super. It's time to despair. And just like that, uh. Co coincidentally, even though it's not a copy of it, coincidentally, just like it, you can also use the Super in the air. The next change is just a simple change to her Astral Command instead of being this, uh obnoxious pretzel motion that most people hate. I have simplified it to just an easy 2-2-2-D. Like so. Which is good, because her Astral is one of the coolest ones in the game easily, so being able to use it easier is uh, definitely a huge buff. Oh boy! With all that out of the way, we get to get to the really good stuff. Her overdrive! <laughs> Oh, this is uh, another one of those that rates on top of one of the strongest overdrives for a super boss to date, because, uh, well, let's just get right into it. Izanami's overdrive does a lot of it. Let's, let's, let's show you her Exceed Excel first, actually. This is possibly the best Exceed Excel on a super boss besides maybe Ragnos. Izanami's Exceed Excel, just like all the other Exceed Excels, is always the active flow version with the fast startup. This has increased base damage, 75% minimum damage, yes, yes. drains 5,000 health and all barrier from the victim, poisons on hit, and restores Izanami's Shield of Dreams gauge to full. Yes, yes. Eleven thousand six hundred and ninety-eight damage raw and forced danger state. Yes, you know. And it gives her shield back. I'm I am appalled at my own creation at this point. <laughs> this is just I mean this is probably my favorite exceeding cell in the entire game. God damn. That is that is enough for for reference that is enough to instantly kill most normal characters outright. And because of the poison effect that it gives on hit too, probably even more than that, this could probably maybe kill like Susano or even Tager. It might just kill every normal character wrong. Actually, you know what we're gonna see right now. Does this kill Tager outright? No fucking way, right? Yes! Okay, so, yeah, that's just instant death, I guess. Cool. Okay, back to sandbag, Rachel. Okay, now that I've probably successfully scarred the entirety of the Blaze Blue community by giving Izanami a pseudo-instant killing exceed excel, let's talk about what her overdrive actually does! So, for starters, just like her in limited form, in case you didn't already know, upon activating overdrive, it will automatically reinstate Izanami's barrier with the amount of gates that she has. Like so. So she gets her two hits that she had stocked up while regenerating. Yes, you did. While this is a while her overdrive is active, if you look at Rachel's health bar, for as long as Izanami's in overdrive, the opponent's barrier and health will constantly decrease unless Izanami is in the middle of one of her lengthy distortion drives. This is meant to represent her sort of like draining your life away by being near her over time. It's it's another one of those things like with the poison, the freezing, where it's like. Really cool and really stupid at the same time, if that makes sense. So, yeah, that adds to her combo damage as well. All physical moves inflict poison, excluding most of her supers, so her B moves now inflict poison as well. All of her freeze effects now have a cap of six hits on every move except for 2-2-C and, uh, 6 2 c but uh, that means you get uh, six freezes with Bulwark, six freezes with just about everything else. All of her Magatama-based hit attacks 
gain the shock animation with more hit stun and detectable time. Wow, that actually comboed both packs out of nasty. I don't think I need to explain how this can easily get unconscious. This also includes her C follow-ups and J2C, as you saw. Ghost Peak Strike! A will launch a third T-Rex head after the second one for more damage. A lot more damage. Thunderbolt Lances, her 2 and 4 B, her 2 and 4 ABC series can now cancel each other freely instead of just an order, so you don't have to go to uh B A C anymore, rather low, mid, overhead. You can now do overhead into low, or mid into low, into overhead, into low again if you want. And 214A will freeze on hit now. Or even easier conversion instead of just off the wall now. Bulwark has a longer freeze timer, letting you do more off of it more easily. Arms of Sympathy will now multi-hit until Izanami lands. Very practical usage in combos. It also has a way of eating up all your freeze hits though, just be warned. Distant Affection drains even more health and heat on hit, and the animation is faster to conserve your overdrive timer. It also now freezes on hit similarly to 2 c That did 9k in the combo with the close to yeah, that's vile. Droplet and Orchid recover even faster after they're done. Two two A and two two B can now whiff cancel into two two C, two two D, and disinfection. So you can do that. Two two C gains plus two freeze count, allowing it to freeze three times in a combo. I think is disinfection the same too? Let me see. Two. Three. Okay, they both have a three. They both, okay, the command grabs have a three freeze limit. And as you probably noticed, it now drags the opponent across the ground like Stake of Supremacy does for more, car for more corner carry. The recovery on hit is reduced, letting you get uh, easier falls along with that freeze, and the Bration 2 is raised to 90, making it a very good combo filler. And all that leaves the overdrive distortion. We will go in the same order, I think, as we did before, starting with 214, 214C. The time stop duration has been increased to 8 seconds from 5, and it can no longer purple throw, letting you use it in combos! After grabbing the opponent, Izanami's bits will zap the opponent with a single droplet shot like the 2-2-D counter, dealing notable extra damage with 110 duration too! Giving the following time stop combo a bit of reverse scaling to boost damage. And you can also block string into it from normals as well, so you can do disgusting, nasty shit like, uh, this. That isn't a true block string, apparently. But that is, that's, that, that is a true, unblockable command grab setup that's totally fair and balanced. What the fuck is this? Oh, I should've done, uh, yeah, I was gonna, I should've done double super instead. Oh, it's like 20k easily. Cool. Anything else for the grab? No, moving on. I guess we can just move on to Overdrive's Take of Supremacy. This nasty ass tracking kick move! Actually, we need to jumping. This nasty ass warping kick move now becomes completely air unblockable! And the initial kick will poison the opponent for extra damage. After the initial air barrage, Izanami will add on additional pain with flying strikes back and forth or dive at the victim to the ground like normal, but instead of slashing them, she will finish them off with a giant flaming dome blast for massive damage. And a huge ground bounce as well, that makes it uh, very easy to follow up on. 368 time stop is even faster now, and by fast... I mean fast. It's faster now and has 115 Paration 2 on the initial hit. Once again, giving your time stop combos a bit of reverse Paration to get going and really lay on the hurt. 
And the Master Storm lost some very, very easy routes into the Time Stop itself. What, what is this do? Yeah, that's fair. 2-3-6-2-3-6-A now becomes unblockable on the initial strike. As more initial cross slashes for the initial barrage, after slamming the beam down, he's now able to stomp on them once before teleporting back to the super gigantic ghost peak strike heads to devour the opponent on the other side of them. And for her last simpler of 2 3 6 2 c it has much faster startup and improved curation. The wave also deals more damage and also becomes unblockable! Yay! A short time after the wave is released as well, it will now release, uh, Izanami will now shoot out several flaming dome explosions that will detonate in a row in front of her that are also air blockable. These explosions will usually catch the opponent after the wall bounce in the wave, allowing for very easy falls. In other cases, it'll, uh, do stuff like that. It's a little bit better. Screen positioning and, yeah, I'm gonna fix that a bit, actually. And last, but certainly not least, before we wrap up this video, is Izanami's devastating overdrive-only instant kill, Yamatsu Dream Armageddon. This move is a parry-type instant kill, and during the startup, Izanami will drain one of her own hits from her Shield of Dreams gauge. If her armor gets hit, she will lose one hit of her shield gauge. If she is hit while her shield gauge is empty, that is when the instant kill will trigger. However, if she does not successfully trigger the instant kill and she instead runs out her parry stance, you will probably notice that Izanami's Shield of Dreams gauge will empty. Her barrier will empty, putting her in danger state. She'll go into a long wave recovery animation, and if I turn off Infinite Overdrive, it will also end her overdrive. So style with care, as otherwise you will be left open to a very, very huge punish, probably. Especially if you're fighting another a super boss. You will probably just die outright from the danger state penalty. However, if your opponent does hit the armor enough... Your victim will be treated to possibly one of the best instant kill attacks I have ever successfully put together. Okay, after that incredibly scuffed presentation, this concludes the Death Empress Izanami Showcase. I am definitely out of practice doing these videos. I am very tired. Um, I think my attempt to streamline the video might have failed, or I might have a lot of excess footage to trim through because my recording is uh, going on 51 minutes plus, and probably more than that, actually. But, in any case, we made it through, luckily. I am happy that everyone's been really patient waiting for Izanami's release here. I really, really, really wanted to have her out, maybe by February, end of February, or at least by March at the latest, but, uh... uh shit happens. In any case, I'm... My voice is starting to hurt. I'm gonna just end this... Down with like the Izanami is in the description below as usual. And I'm very glad to start the Blaze Boogle re releases off this year with a bang. Missed all my stuttering. Okay, I'm gonna uh yes, hate myself for botching the deliver on this video. Thank you all very much for watching and your continued uh hype and praise and patience for Izanami's release. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoy using Izanami and hope uh don't despair too much while trying to fight her. God help your soul if you try to do that. Hope to catch you in all future uploads. And I'll see you later.